So what I want to talk about today is I want to talk about COVID-19 and how that's requiring us to take our usual chalk and talk lectures and transition them to something new. So I want to emphasize that transition. I want to emphasize that transition because we're going to try to leverage your existing skills. Change is hard. COVID-19 is really hard. Let's not make it harder. So right now, I hope you know how to give chalk and talk lectures. Otherwise, you need to see some of the other people in the uh, uh, Center for Teaching and Learning, and they'll help you out to, uh, to get that skill figured out. In March of 2020, everybody did an amazing job on delivering remote lectures on very short, short notice and with not a lot of preparation. We're hoping that you can transition by the fall of 2020 to giving some somewhat better remote lectures, but still following the same general pattern that you've followed before in delivering the same kind of material that our students have come to expect from a high quality education in Queens. Now, Brian and Eric will tell us that really we need to have asynchronous delivery. And that asynchronous delivery should come in chunks. And those chunks should probably not be any more than seven minutes long. That's gonna be difficult. But let's see if we can get there, starting from just what we're doing right now, writing out a, a lecture on paper and building that into something else. Now, of course, ultimately, we'd like to deliver some polished online education courses. This is the special skill that, uh, that we have in the engineering teaching and learning team. And we have no hope of getting that ready for fall of 2020. So let's, knowing that we can't do this, trying to do better than the credible job we did in March, see if for the fall we can do a combination of remote teaching and some asynchronous elements that we may be able to leverage later on into more polished online courses. So I'm a fluids guy, and so I'm gonna talk about some very simple fluid mechanics questions. We'll start off by looking at Bernoulli's equation. Now you'll all remember Bernoulli's equation from our last lecture on, uh, on conserving energy in a fluid flow. So what we saw was that the potential energy of elevation the potential energy of pressure and the potential energy, or sorry, the kinetic energy associated with a particle fluid at one location will be the same, the combined potential and kinetic energy when that particle moves to another location. So the elevation at the second location, the potential energy of pressure at the second location, and the kinetic energy, again, at the second location. And what do you remember that we need to have in order to be able to apply Bernoulli's equation between two points? Well, those two points need to be on a streamline. The flow needs to be steady, incompressible, and we can't have any losses. So let's consider a problem where we've got water starting at one location at a moderate velocity 
it's accelerating as it falls, and then it's hitting a plate. That solid plate. Now the water will come to a complete stop here. That's a stagnation point. And it's going to turn and go off in both directions out from the plate like that. And if we looked at the outline of the jet of water, it's going to be contracting as it accelerates. And then it's going to turn and go off out to the sides like that. So water, starting off here, accelerating, then coming to a stop at the stagnation point and going out to the sides. The problem that we've been posed is if V1 is two meters per second. So that's our velocity at location one. What is the pressure at location two? And remember that's a stagnation pressure. And this is location two down here. <coughs> now, of course, we could write Bernoulli's equation between points one and two, and that's what we're going to do. We could also write Bernoulli's equation between points one and three. And the only interesting thing that would tell us is because of falling this distance, delta z, it will have accelerated the velocity will have increased due to acceleration due to gravity. Not very exciting. So let's write down some things that we do know. The pressure of one is atmospheric pressure, and that's zero if we do our calculations and gauge pressure which we usually do in a mechanical engineering environment. We're usually interested in the difference between the pressure and atmospheric pressure. The velocity at two, we know, is zero. <coughs> because it's a stagnation point. Density, well, it's water at nominally 20 degrees Celsius. So that's 998 kilograms per cubic meter. So where do we go from there? We write Bernoulli's equation. Z1 plus P1 over rho G plus V1 squared over 2G equal to Z2 plus P2 over rho G plus V2 squared over 2G. Now V2 is zero, that term will cancel out. If P1 is zero, that term will cancel out. And we're left rearranging, taking P2 across, P2, over rho g equal to z1 minus z2. So z1 is higher, z2 is lower, plus v1 squared over 2g. So what do we got here? We got the pressure at location two is gonna depend on how far it fell the farther it fell, the higher the pressure. And the pressure at location two is going to depend on how fast it was moving up here, that V1 squared over 2G, the kinetic energy that the flow had when we started up at this location. Rearranging, taking rho G across, P2 equal to rho G times delta Z, 
the difference in height plus rho v1 squared over 2, g canceling out, and we didn't have delta z specified. <coughs> so what is delta z? Let's take it equal to 30 centimeters, because that's a reasonable height for the application where this was actually the spoke from a tap going into a sink. So 30 centimeters from there to there, not an unreasonable height. So plugging in some numbers, we'll get P2 equal to density 998 times G 9.81 times 0 0.3. And that's our 30 centimeters. We've got it to meters so that we've got consistent units so that we will wind up with Pascals as our result. And then we've got 998. That's that density there again. Times V1, that's two meters per second squared divided by two, that's the two from here. Punching in those numbers, that gives me 2937 for this one, and 1996 for this one, or a total of 4933. And the units are, well, that's kilograms per cubic meter. And that is meters per second squared. And that is meters. So kilogram meter per second squared, that's a Newton meter, a meter cubed, that'll be meter squared. So that's a Newton per meter squared or Pascals. So our pressure is about 5,000 Pascals, five kilopascals. Five kilopascals, that's about 1 20th of atmospheric pressure. So we found out that if the flow is starting down here at two meters per second, and it falls about 30 centimeters, then the pressure when it hits the sink, hits the bottom of the sink or the plate or whatever it's landing on, that pressure will be about 1 20th of an atmosphere larger than the local atmospheric pressure. Five kilopascals larger than the local atmospheric pressure. That's 5,000 Newton per square meter. That's quite a bit of uh, force if that was spread over an entire square meter. So by applying Bernoulli's equation, we could figure out pressures in situations where friction isn't really important. And in this instance, friction really isn't that important.